As soon as you walk inside of Dollar Tree, you'll find some great items to create with. Here on the Daily DIYer channel, you'll find many inspiring tutorial style videos sharing multiple ways to hack everyday items and turn them into beautiful and useful creations. Today, you'll get a look inside of the best of the best Dollar Tree DIYs of the year. Hi everyone, my name is Shannon from the DailyDIYer.com. I want to welcome you here today. Let's dive into the very first set of projects that are going to revolve around these awesome self-adhesive wall tiles. They have lots of different styles and colors to choose from. I really like the silver ones, so all of these projects are going to include the silver ones, but of course, use your favorites. Now the first project, we're also going to grab one of those trays you can find in Dollar Tree. They usually come in silver, gold, and prints. Doesn't matter. You can paint them if you're not happy with the pattern of the color and we're just going to cut one of these tiles down to size because we're going to fit it right down into the bottom of our rectangular tray. Now I do suggest cutting it down just a little bit smaller than the inside of the tray so that it doesn't bubble or warp at all. It just nicely fits right down in there. Now we're gonna use a tape runner to install this. You can use hot glue if you want, but sometimes that does melt these tiles, so be careful, maybe a low temp glue gun. I love this tape runner. I will link it down below. I usually use the little ones, but I recently upgraded to this larger tape gun because it's like endless amounts and I use it a lot. So if you use tape runners a lot, check out this tape runner. I found it on Amazon. Like I said, I'll link it down below. It's basically a double-sided adhesive, no mess, and it doesn't melt anything. You just stick it on the bottom, stick your tile right on top, and now we have the impression of this tile in the bottom of the tray. We're going to make this all look more cohesive with the help of some rub and buff. So our tray is silver already, our tile is silver already, but they're a little bit different in tone. So if we take some of this rub and buff and just paint it right onto the tray, it all turns into the same color, still has that really pretty silver metallic look. Now, how you use your tray is completely up to you. I added three LED candles to the top of mine, but I think this would be so pretty in an office with little pens and pencil containers on top of it too. So however you use it, run with your own idea, create your own vision. Now we had a little bit of some leftovers when we cut the last tile down to size for the last project. So I didn't want it to go to waste. We're gonna use it for a napkin ring and it is so easy to make. We're gonna take our tape runner and we're gonna add two strips of that adhesive to the end of one of those sides that we cut down in half and then just brought the other tail around, press them together and as you can see, we made a little tube with our tile and then you just take your napkin and push that right through your loop. Really quick, simple and inexpensive napkin ring just gives a little touch to your tablescapes. Our next tile project turns out so high end, so classy looking, but it is so easy. We're gonna take another one of those tiles, flip it over to the back side. You're also gonna need a cylinder vase. You can find these at Dollar Tree too, or check your thrift stores, because I feel like I see these all the time at the thrift store too, and you might be able to find them just a little bit cheaper there, but still a great price at Dollar Tree. So I've just marked the height of our vase on the back side of the tile ran a ruler across those lines to make a straight line and then cut the tile down to size. Now, as you can see, once we cut it, then it opens up one of the ends because there's only adhesive around the outside edge of these tiles. So we're coming in with our tape runner again, adding some adhesive, and then we're gonna push down the backing to close the tile back up. And the reason we're doing that is because these tiles also come with a plastic coating. And when you remove that, you get adhesive on the backing again, and we're gonna use that to attach it to the vase. So as you can see, I pointed out we have the cut end and then the straight end that came with the tile. We want the straight end on the bottom of our vase. We have a nice clean look. Hot glue your edge to the back where we overlap it. And then you can leave it silver if you like. However, I love gold in my decor right now. So I grabbed some gold leafing rub and buff. Just like the tray, I'm using a paintbrush to paint the rub and buff onto the tile. I will make sure to link the rub and buff along with the tape runner down in the description box below. But you paint this however you want or use whatever tile you want to get the look that you're wanting. But I added some faux tulips to this vase. Those are also from Amazon. I'll link them down below too. I love tulips all spring, all summer long. And this just looks so classy and high end. I was so happy with the end result of that project. And now let's do one more tile DIY before we move on to the next awesome item you can create with, you can find at Dollar Tree. 
This project is a napkin holder that you can find at Dollar Tree. I've just traced it onto the back side of the tile. Again, part of the excess that we had left over from another tile. And we are just going to remove the plastic backing on those all together because we don't really need it. Otherwise it's gonna stick to our napkins. And we're gonna attach these tiles half circles onto the napkin holder with some super glue. So just put little dots on the outside edge of your napkin holder and press those tiles into place. I would say let your super glue sit for a good hour before actually putting any napkins in there so that way your glue sets up all the way is hard and cured you can even paint these if you want but it just elevates a inexpensive napkin holder to one that looks a little bit more fancy for your home now up next are books you can find so many great hardback books at dollar tree and they are great to craft with so i have a few ideas these are my favorites we're going to take one of those hardback books and we're going to take an exacto knife and we're going to cut all the pages out of the center of this book now don't throw those pages away we're going to be using some of those here shortly and the easiest way to get those out is just run your X-Acto knife along the front and back pages along the spine and kind of pull the hardback book away from the pages until you can just easily remove them all as one big bunch and bundle. And then as you can see, we are left with the outside part of our book, which is so cool. We can use this for so many different things, but let's add some style to this. Grab out some scrap of paper, whatever style is speaking to you that day. I'm pretty sure I found this set. If it wasn't at Walmart, it was at Hobby Lobby. And we're just going to measure the inside of our book covers and make two pieces of scrapbook paper the size so we can then glue those to the inside covers to give it some of our own personal stamp and style. I'm using a little bit of hot glue, just putting a few little dots here or there. You could also use a tape runner here if you'd like. Just adding some glue so we can sit our scrapbook paper in the glue and that will hold it in place for us. So what are we actually making here? We're gonna make sort of a hidden box, treasure box style thing that looks like a book when we're done with it. And to do that, we're taking some of these paint star sticks. I find these on Amazon and we're cutting them down to size with a pair of 10 snips. I find those 10 snips at Walmart. They're only $5 each, just kind of like a heavy duty pair of scissors, perfect for thin things like popsicle sticks and these uh, paint stir sticks. So we're using some hot glue to then attach those stir sticks onto the outside edge of just one side of our book. So once we got the two longer sides in, we're going to measure the shorter ends, measure those on the sticks, use our 10 snips to cut them down, and we kind of create this hidden space on the inside of our book. It's always good to reinforce these paint sticks with even more glue, running some glue on the outside and inside edges to reinforce it. We're also gonna add some glue to the spine of the book and then press it onto the inside of the paint stir stick so it stays all together. Then we're gonna come back in and add a little bit more style to our book. My pack of scrapbook paper also had these fun kind of washi tape style stripes pages in there so i thought that was perfect for the spine of my book so i found one that i really liked just cut it out cut it down to size and then we're just going to attach that on to the spine of the book with some hot glue this is also a fun way if you like to display books for decorative purposes on your shelf you can use scrapbook paper like this and just add it to the spines of your books to give it the color that you want or the look and style that you want in a really inexpensive and easy way hit the thrift store grab some old books dress them up with some scrapbook paper and you have a cute addition to your shelves so here's what it looks like once it's all put together we now have this hidden space on the inside of our book cute for a office desk you can put some of your post-it notes scissors pens markers in there and then you just kind of look like you have a decorative little um, accessory for your desk or a great place to hide items that you want to keep hidden to 
Now I have a whole section dedicated to mason jars. I'm obsessed with mason jars. You'll see here in just a minute. But this one still goes along the lines of using a book to create, create and craft with. So this book is also from Dollar Tree. The inside cover had this really pretty design on it. So we're going to take our X-Acto knife and just cut the inside decorative page out of this book. You could use scrapbook paper here, computer paper, construction paper if you want, but this is a fun way to repurpose books if you've got some extras laying around and they have these pretty decorative inside pages. I just cut one out and then measured it up with the side of the mason jar and then cut it down to the right height too. Now, unfortunately, this didn't wrap all the way completely around the mason jar. So the back cover also had the same decorative page on it. So I cut that out, did the exact same thing, cut it down to the same size, and then we're going to glue the ends together to make a longer piece that will wrap all the way around the mason jar. Now we're gonna cut out a little window on this strip of paper and I thought a heart would be cute. So I cut a template out with a piece of paper first. It takes me a few tries to get a good shaped heart in the right size. So it's nice to make a template first until you're happy with it. And then go ahead, flip over your paper and then use a pencil to trace around your template to give you the shape that you're wanting to cut out of the strip. Now come in with an X-Acto knife and just trace around those edges that you just drew on your paper to cut the window out of this strip. It's gonna create a really pretty place for us to then put a candle in here shortly. So here's our heart. Now we can start attaching the paper around the mason jar. So we're actually gonna put it around here first and kind of line it up where we want it, overlap it in the back, and then mark where we wanna cut it down. Cause obviously now it's too long. So I just kind of mark it with a fold and then come in with some scissors, cut it down to size, and then we're just gonna glue this strip onto our mason jar. It is so pretty, right? We're gonna add a little bit more detail to this, give it a little bit more style with some of this white string you can find at Dollar Tree too. I just wrapped it around the top edge of the mason jar a few times and then tied a knot and added that to the top to give it a little bit more character. Then you can add a battery powered tea light from Dollar Tree into your mason jar and get a really pretty luminary and it really gives a pretty ambiance to your room in the evening time. Up next, we're also gonna have to grab one of these picture frames from Dollar Tree. I love Dollar Tree picture frames. They have so many great ones to choose from. I love this one. It has a mat in it, really pretty gold frame. I've cut a piece of a book page down to the size, which is a four by six size that would fit on the inside of this picture frame. Took a Sharpie marker, drew on some leaves, and then used some watercolor markers to fill in the leaves to give it some color. And then it's just really as simple as that then once you have all of your design, you could do flowers or whatever you want for your creation here. Filled in, you just insert your artwork into the picture frame. I think this is so pretty to give a little pop of color on a shelf in addition to maybe your family pictures or, you know, if you have um, items that you have framed, then you can just add something like this to give it just a little pop of color and style. This is really a fancy look in the end, but it's so quick and easy to do. Now I told you I had some mason jar DIYs coming up and I am obsessed with mason jars, so much so that I made a video earlier this year with 50 
hacks and DIYs that you can use with Dollar Tree mason jars. I will link that video down in the description box below if you love mason jars as much as I do. I'm just highlighting my favorites for this one. And this one's going to include some awesome accessories I found on Amazon that actually complement the Dollar Tree mason jars really, really well. So I've used some of these mason jars to add some ingredients that I keep on hand, my dry ingredients on our open shelving. And to kind of give it a little bit more of a high-end look, I found these great lids on Amazon. I'll link them down below. They just pop right onto the top of the lid. Give it a fancy look. We're going to elevate it just a little bit more with the help of these labels. I also found these on Amazon too. Another really affordable and simple way to really customize the look in your kitchen and keep everything organized at the same time. And here's a look at some baking powder and some cornstarch that I added to some Dollar Tree mason jars with those lids and the labels that really just help pull this all together and keep everything pretty and organized. This is another accessory that I'm obsessed with. It goes with mason jars that I found on Amazon. It is a mason jar vacuum sealer. It's USB and you can recharge it, which I love. And it's a great way to store dry food items that you may not necessarily get into right away, or if it's something you want to keep around for a while, it's going to elongate the life. This set comes with all the accessories that you're going to need to vacuum seal with mason jars. So what you do is you put the metal lid on top and then you find the right adapter that fits your mason jar because it comes with the wide mouth and also the regular mouth adapters then it's just as easy as setting this little contraption on top it has a power button and then you just let it uh, vacuum out all the air for about 15 seconds it's literally that easy you take it off you take the plastic lid off and your you now have an airtight seal and you just add that ring back onto your mason jar and to get back in it you take your ring off and then this set also comes with this little pop top um, remover to make it easy to get back into your mason jars i just love it i'll link it down below which is one of those things that i'm obsessed with that i thought i would throw in here you can also find these cute little rings at dollar tree i also found this larger size mason jar at the thrift store for only 50 cents so always check there for mason jars you're going to get a better deal than you will buying them new in store and these cute little frogs that fit on the tops of these mason jars just add some water in there and use it to style your flowers it's just as easy as that flowers this time of year just bring me so much joy and you kind of feel like you're more of like a professional florist whenever you have these little contraptions that fit on the tops of these jars love it so much so pretty and just makes life a little bit easier if you get some flowers from the store now let's do some fun diys with these dollar tree mason jars I like the ones from Dollar Tree because they're completely flat, but if you don't have those, you can use the one with the raised edges on them too, like I'm showing you here. We're gonna make a really pretty luminary. We're gonna take some Elmer's school glue and then just one drop of food coloring, whatever color you want. We're gonna take a popsicle stick, stir those all together. It's basically going to color our glue for us. And then once we have that all mixed together, take a paintbrush and paint this glue right onto your mason jar. You just need one coat of this and then you're going to need to let it sit probably overnight just to make sure it completely dries all the way and you're going to be stunned by the finished product once this dries because it looks kind of milky and creamy whenever you put it all on there but watch what it looks like once it's dried it just looks so pretty it's almost kind of like a sea glass look so maybe even do kind of like a greenish color mix green and blue together to get kind of a turquoisey color but you can use this to add some battery powered tea lights to mine is a real candle but it also is a jar candle so it's all contained in there i wouldn't put an open flame up against the glue as it could melt it could scorch it we don't want that so probably a battery powered candle would be better here since we put the glue on the outside you could also use this as a vase and put some water on the inside and put your flowers in there so try it out so easy even kiddos could do this one 
Now, speaking of kiddos, this next one is perfect for them. Dollar Tree also carries this awesome color changing Elmer's glue. And we're going to do the exact same process, except we don't have to add colorant to this because this one already is colored. So again, just brushing this glue right onto the mason jar. One coat is good. Let it sit overnight and then watch what happens once it dries. It's kind of going to have a creamy, glossy, um, a little bit different of a look than the traditional Elmer's glue. You can also find these cool bank lids at Dollar Tree. Another great thing to create a kid's gift or let kids create for themselves so they can start saving up their money, sticking it down in there, putting their treasures in there. But watch this glue. I mean, as soon as it hits the sun, it turns colors like instant magic. So the started blue, when you, it hits the light, it's purple. I don't know, it's just so fun. Obviously something kids would like, but it even like made me <laughs> see how awesome and cool this was. So adults and kids alike, try it out. Here it is again, once it goes back to the blue color that it started with. I have another fun one for adults and kids alike. Grab some Sharpie markers. Even Dollar Tree carries Sharpie markers and especially a good variety now with the Dollar Tree Plus if you have a Dollar Tree Plus section. If not, head to Walmart, head to Amazon. I'll link my favorites down in the description box below. And you can just take those markers and color on your mason jar. Do whatever kind of design that you want, pattern that you want. I did kind of a rainbow design in just blocks and went around randomly adding squares of color with my mason jars and this is what it turned out like. It's so pretty. I love that you can kind of get that translucent look with it. Use it in your craft room. You can put those Sharpie markers in there as kind of a container to keep them organized. You could put it in your window and kind of get that stained glass look. But you can also find these cool little attachments at Dollar Tree. It's another lid with a chain on it so you can use it to hang. So simply just twist it right on. You can put flowers in here. You could use it as a luminary and put a candle in here. You guys get creative with this. This one it was super fun. Highly recommend it. Give it a try. It's easy, kind of mess free and inexpensive to try out. I'm also obsessed with Mod Podge. You can find smaller containers these even at Dollar Tree. We're gonna grab out some of these pressed flowers. You can make your own pressed flowers. You can just get a kit and then press them or put them in a book and press them until they're dried out. It takes a week or more, or you can purchase some. I found mine on Amazon. I'll link them down below. We're gonna add some Mod Podge onto the front of a mason jar and then set our flower on top of the glue and then add some more of the Mod Podge on top. Now here, I'm just kind of dabbing it on because I don't want to brush the flowers off of the stem. So sometimes you just kind of have to dab it on versus brush it on. It'll be a little bit thicker, so it'll take a little bit longer to dry, but this is what it's gonna look like once all of that Mod Podge and adhesive dries. You can add some rocks or some sand or a filler to the inside, add a candle, and you have a really pretty accessory. You guys just love the planter hacks. I've done this three years in a row now. I wanted to throw in my absolute favorite ones, and honestly, these are kind of your favorite ones too, into this video. So first up, they have these new stacking three container uh, planters at Dollar Tree now in different sizes. This is the medium size. They come three in a pack, which is a bargain at $1.25. We're gonna make a stacking organizer. So I grabbed some of these river rocks from Dollar Tree. I put them in the center and then stacked the next planter on top. It's gonna add some weight to it so it doesn't just easily topple over because I wanna put some items into each one of those compartments. I also added some hot glue. That's gonna help with this to keep it all together. So using just regular hot glue, stacking them on top of each other, now we have one piece. We're also gonna add a little mini uh, flower pot to the center here to add some additional storage. You can find those at Dollar Tree too, instead of just letting the center kind of go to waste. So if you add a little flower pot in there, it gives you another space for storage. Now, if you're gonna use this in your craft room, this is, holds so much stuff. So you can see I've added some paint brushes, some foam paint brushes, some uh, markers, some Sharpies, and added some of my decorative scissors to the center. You can see this holds a ton. Huge amount of storage for only $1.25 and a quick DIY that anybody can do. You could use this in the kitchen with kitchen supplies. You could use this in your office for office supplies. So like I said, get creative wherever you are needing some additional storage. 
Next up is a fun plant hanger. You can find these bamboo rings at Dollar Tree. If you can't find them, hit Amazon or the craft store. You need two eight inch ones and one six inch ring and you can get those as embroidery hoops and make the same thing. So we're gonna take some jute, some thin jute that you can find from Dollar Tree and we're gonna put the smallest one in the middle and a larger one on the right side here. Just using that twine to go wrap around those uh, rings so that they'll stay together. Now we need to do the same exact thing on the other side using the other larger hoop, keeping the smallest one in the center, using our jute to just wrap those two together so we have a big hoop, a small hoop, and then another big hoop on the other side. Go ahead, cut off any excess string hanging off, and then you want to gather the larger rings at the top in the center here. So this is the shape we are going for for our plant hanger. At this point now, we're also gonna take some twine and we're going to wrap those around the top two larger rings to keep them together. To make this hangable, this is a four ply jute that I get at Walmart and I'll link it down below. We're gonna add this to the top where we gathered the two larger hoops together. Just make two long tails, tie a knot, cut off the ends, and then tie another knot at the top to make your little hanging piece. Now you're gonna need your planter. This is a pot from Dollar Tree that just happens to slide right into our hoops and sit down on the smaller one. So now we can add our plants to this. You can do fake plants and put this inside. You can do real plants and cut out the holes in the bottom of your planter so you have some drainage holes and add soil and your live plants to this too. I have loved getting back into some wood projects and DIY projects that this channel kind of started with eight years ago, the DIY wood projects, but I kind of gotten away from it. So it was nice to come back and do a little bit more of that. I'm using a one by six board here and some planter pots from Dollar Tree. We're gonna make a nice little wood holder for them. We're gonna cut our one by six down to two pieces that are six inches long. So here is your cut list. You need one board at 21 inches long and two other boards that are six inches long made from one by six boards. Now we need to evenly space out our pots on this one by six. And I have done the math for you. You need to mark the centers at three inches, eight inches, 13 inches, and 18 inches, and just mark this exact centers of those. We're gonna use a hole saw here to then drill out these holes. I got a hole saw that was the same size or a little bit smaller size than my uh, pots so they would slide into the holes when we're done. Now you guys definitely mentioned that I probably need a device or a clamp for this. Highly recommend that. Unfortunately, I didn't have one so I kind of struggled to get these holes drilled, but we got there eventually and now we actually have a drill press that would have made this so much easier. So in the future, I will definitely be using that. But you can see if you're using a drill and these inexpensive hole saws, it really is not too bad. You just need to use some muscle and some patience. Drill through the first side until you have that small hole hit through the center and then flip it over and put the, the drill bit back into the smaller hole and drill from the other side. Obviously you wanna pop out the hole that you just cut from the hole saw before you go back and drill the next hole. So I have four pots here and I marked four spaces. So we're gonna have four holes in this little plant holder. 
If you're going to be painting this or staining it, either way, I highly recommend going ahead and sanding down your pieces so you have a nice clean piece that doesn't have any um, raised edges or splinters coming out. Just makes you for a much nicer piece in the end. I used some 80 grit sandpaper and then had to hand sand down the insides of the holes to make those nice too. So here's all our pieces ready to go and now it's time to assemble. I'm going to be using my Roby uh, brad nailer for this and I just marked down the side two and a quarter inches from the top so that way both sides of my feet on this plant stand would be the same so just drawing a line here that is going to give me a guide of where I need to shoot these nails So now that our feet are attached on both sides, I came in with my sander again, sanded it all smooth, and it also removed those pencil lines that I had marked. And at this point, you can go ahead and add your planters if you want. You can just seal this with some polycrylic if you want. I decided to add some wood stain to mine, and you can paint this if you want. But if you're going to be staining, highly recommend using some nitrile gloves to protect your hands. I'm going to be using... Uh, Min Wax's Early American Wood Stain for this. I'll link it down below. You can find it at Walmart. And we're just going to make sure to go around the inside edges of those holes and flip it over, do all the sides so everything gets a good coat. I love wood stain because it not only adds color, but it also is going to seal the wood and protect it from the elements. I let this guy sit overnight so it could cure, and now it is ready to actually use. I have this plant um, planting station on our back porch, so I just added it there on my potting station. Added my Dollar Tree planters to this. You could obviously add live plants. These are fake plants. It was a little bit too cold yet whenever I created this to put live plants out yet, but fake plants work in the meantime. You can see this is so cute. Just gives it a little bit more style and character and easy beginner DIY wood project to try out too. So let's go from an involved planter project into one that is simple and anyone can do. Dollar Tree Plus section now has a great selection of huge planters. This one is a 14 inch planter for only $3, still a really great price. And we are going to update it with the help of some spray paint. So I'm down in my workshop here. I have this cool paint tent you can use it in your garage, you can use it in your backyard. Use it in your workshop. It's going to keep the overspray from going everywhere. I also like to use a Lazy Susan with mine so that way I can kind of spin it as I spray. Here is my planter. We're just going to start spraying this with some matte black spray paint. You can see how big this planter is. It's pretty good sized. This is the spray paint I like the most. It's a matte uh, black and I did go ahead and spray the bottom of this first and then set it on my Lazy Susan and then worked my way around. I would suggest also spray painting some on the inside edge of your planter as you don't want to see the orange once you get your plant in there or whatever you're going to be putting in there and that'll kind of hide it and you won't have to put so much stuffing in there. Here's what our planter looks like after a couple coats of that black spray paint on the inside and out. And now we can add it to our decor. So I have this big olive tree and I wanted to, a nice planter for it. So I also grabbed this smaller planter that fits down on the inside of this planter, just flipped it upside down, it is going to raise up this tree for me. 
Now we got to fill on in the inside of the planter too. So this is some extra burlap fabric that I had. You can use a towel, you can use an old blanket, and we're just going to shove that around the inside. And then we're going to grab some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree. You can find this year round all the time. And here's a little tip. If you want to make it go a little bit farther, you just want to pull it apart. So don't leave it all kind of bundled up in the package the way it comes out. I used two packages for mine, just stuck it in there, kind of pulled it apart, and that kind of loosens it up, fills up the space a little bit easier. And you can see this turned a Dollar Tree planter into one that looks super high end and classy. I am pretty sure this is the DIY of the year. You guys have ranted and raved and loved this one. This one, we're going to grab a $5 kind of fancier planter from Dollar Tree and also a bunch of their river rock. You get your style that you like best. I like kind of the more natural toned one and also a tur turquoise planter that we're going to make a fountain out of. This is so easy. Anybody can do it. It's impressive and it's affordable. We're going to buy another small planter that fits down on the inside of the larger planter like we did the last project. You're also going to need some pool noodles and I love that Dollar Tree now carries these uh, pool noodle knives. You guys have said if you can't find these use a lettuce knife. I didn't know those ex existed but it's pretty much the same thing but it cuts through these pool noodles like butter and it doesn't damage your work surface which is why I'm not using a cutting board or anything underneath. And then you just take your pool noodles that you've cut up and kind of put them around the inside and around that smaller pot that we put in there earlier. So I put bigger ones in first and then there were still some holes. So I cut some down even smaller to fill up more of those gaps. That's going to keep our rocks from falling down in there and us not having to use so many rocks in the end. So here's what it looked like once I got this all buttoned up here. Next step is to add our fountain. So you can find these solar fountains on Amazon. I'll link mine down in the description box below. They have little suction cups on the feet. So it suctioned right down onto that planter. And now we need to add our river rock. I'm pretty sure I used about five packs of these from Dollar Tree, just adding them around the fountain and also on top of the pool noodles. So the coolest thing about this fountain is it can be used with a solar panel or you can plug it into a USB and have it on constantly. With the solar panel, it only turns on when the sun hits it. It doesn't charge and keep it on. It literally just turns off when the sun is not hitting it. So it's not using any of the water at nighttime, which I like. And you actually just fill your planter with water connect everything so that the fountain is attached to the solar panel and as soon as light hits it it pops on there's also different connectors that you can put on the fountain to get different fountain effects you can take the adapters off the top and get more of a bubbling water effect too so it's kind of up to you how you want it these can spray pretty high too, as you can see, you can get a pretty good fountain size. Um, but this is just a really fun, easy project. Anybody can create their own fountain or water feature for their front porch, for their backyard, for their patio, for next to their swimming pool, wherever you need a little bit of this water ambiance. It is so quick and easy to do. I also like that this solar panel has a couple different ways you can attach it. It has feet, so you can um, sit it up. You can just lay it on the ground. You can attach it to the wall if you want, wherever you get good sunlight. One item you can pretty much guarantee Dollar Tree is going to carry at every Dollar Tree is their nautical rope. It comes in the neutral kind. It comes in the more white cotton kind. I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to make some coasters. So this is just some regular felt. I traced a circle on and then cut it out with some scissors. And we're going to be using the white cotton felt for this project because it's going to help absorb any moisture that comes off of our cup. To create these coasters, we're going to take some hot glue, add the end of our rope to the glue and then just spiral it and turn it around in a circle adding hot glue as we go onto the felt we're just wrapping this around in a circle and once we get the entire thing of felt completely covered then we can trim off the tail and also cut off any excess felt
So I love these coasters because they are so cute, but they are also so practical too. These are perfect for outdoors. Add them to a side table and you can enjoy your lemonade, your iced tea, your iced water as you enjoy some warmer weather. You can also use rope to dress up items, including these solar lights from Dollar Tree. We're gonna up them a little bit by also grabbing one of these cute nautical vases that they have, but you don't necessarily have to use these. You can find different containers and vases that Dollar Tree carries. You just wanna make sure they are obviously kind of clear so you can see through them. We're gonna turn these um, hanging lanterns into ones that are just gonna sit on the table. So we're gonna remove the hangers from the top. It was quick and easy to do with some pliers, but you can reattach these, so hang on to them. They're definitely gonna come in handy for other projects that would work with mason jars too. Once we get the hangers taken off, they just look like little cute vases that we're gonna turn into luminaries. We're also gonna use the cotton nautical rope for this, but you could even do the jute rope for this too. We're gonna take the bottom stake off and we're just gonna use the top part for this project. Always pull the tab, make sure your lights work, put your hand over the top, see if the light turns on and we are good to go to continue with this project. We're gonna add some hot glue around the top edge where the silver part is and just cover that up and cut the tail off. Let's dress up this vase too. Let's add a little bit of rope to the bottom edge of our vases. It's gonna make this look like one cohesive piece that all works together. Now all we have to do is add our solar light to the inside of this face and now we have such a pretty luminary for outside. I love the green glass on these. So pretty during the day, but obviously when the sun goes down, these will pop on and give you a nice ambiance of light during the evening time. Bringing this one back to grabbing this pack of three plastic containers, we got a puppy last summer and named her Honey, so I'm kind of obsessed with everything Honey and Honey Bees right now too, so this one's definitely worth bringing back. We're gonna make a beehive using one of those planters and some nautical rope from Dollar Tree. So I've just used some hot glue and wrapped that rope all the way around our planter. We're gonna take a section of rope and we're gonna add a hanger to the top too. So we're gonna take our hot glue and we're gonna attach that rope first. And then we're gonna take the excess rope that we're not quite done wrapping around over the tails of this to encase it. And then you don't see the tails of the loop. Now let's add on the little front of our beehive. This is just a piece of round felt glued onto the front and then to cover up the edges, we're using a smaller jute to go around the edge, makes it look nice and finished. You can also dress this up however you want. You can add some bumblebees to it, that would be cute. I added some uh, gingham ribbon to the top of this to add some more style and then added it to a tiered tray with all kinds of sunflowers and other additional honeybee themed accessories. Seashells is another item you can find year round at Dollar Tree. These are great too. They have such a huge variety and there's so many different things you can do with this. During the summertime with their coastal items, you can find these seashell trays. And I decided to make a resin tray that is to die for. If you've never used resin before, it is so fun to do. You just wanna make sure you do, of course, safety first. You need a mask and some gloves to protect yourself. And then resin is so simple. It is literally two parts. It's a resin and epoxy that just you mix together, a hardener and an adhesive and they harden over time. So Dollar Tree also has a lot of other great seashells and miniature ones in these bottles, some starfish in their coastal section. We're also gonna grab some of these pearls from the craft section, and we're gonna add all of this to our seashell tray with the help of that resin. So what we do here is we're gonna put our mask on, we're gonna put our gloves on, and we're gonna start mixing small batches up of this resin. So resin is so easy, like I said, it's just two parts, two equal parts. So whatever you measure out with your first part, you wanna measure out the same exact amount for your second 
amount, so you have a one-to-one -one ratio. Mixing resin is the key here. You do not want to incorporate any air bubbles. You want to mix slowly and you don't want to stir up any bubbles from the top. Keep your popsicle stick down to try to keep as many air bubbles out as you can. Once you have everything good and incorporated, go ahead and pour that into your container. And in this case, it is our seashell tray from Dollar Tree. So we have just added one layer of epoxy first make sure you use the popsicle stick get any excess out of your container and then we can start adding in your little element so these are all dollar tree items and i added a starfish in first and then we're going to add some more epoxy on top of that and then added some seashells so we have some bigger ones some smaller ones even some of the dollar tree glass beads that you can find and then adding some small pearls last This really is such a fun process. You can just let your creativity fly here and add whatever elements you want and as much as you want, but you just wanna make sure you keep adding some resin until everything is covered up. I did have the issue of some of my seashells rising to the top and floating to the top, but if you just take those shells out and add some of the resin to the inside of the shells, it'll weight them down and it'll keep them in there. This was 48 hours later. It took about that long for this much resin to harden, but you can see now everything is encased in the resin. It's not sticky anymore, and you can use this in a couple different ways. This works great in an entryway or by your back door to kind of collect things like your keys or your change or your mail. That way it has kind of a drop zone for you and it looks so pretty too. You can also use this as a candle holder. So you definitely don't want to put an open flame near the resin, but if you have a contained flame, like I'm going to show you here with a mason jar candle, then that would work. Just don't let it burn down too, too far so it doesn't get too hot at the bottom, but looks really, really pretty and love the coastal vibe of the seashells. You can also use these seashells to embellish things. So we're going to make a cute little beaded garland. You can find these wood bead strings at Dollar Tree. And then we're going to use some four ply jute to create a tassel to go on the end of it. Now I would say maybe use the thinner jute from Dollar Tree. This almost ended up being a little bit too thick of a jute but we're gonna make this one work so you basically just wrap your jute around something hard several times and then tie a knot with another piece of string at the top and gather those loops together then once you have that tied on you can slide your loops off of the whatever the board or whatever you're using to create your circles now we can take our scissors and trim the loops at the other end and we have the start of a tassel we're going to take some more jute and kind of wrap it around the top where we tied the knot to gather this tassel together. Now we are going to cut off any excess tails we have on there, gather the tails at the other end together and trim those so they're all the same length too. Now that we have our tassel made, we are gonna attach it onto our string of beads. To do that, we're gonna trim off the excess tails at the top of our tassel, take some glue, kind of add those to the knots so that way our knots don't eventually come undone. We don't want that to happen. Then take a yard needle, put it on the string of beads, and then string the string through the tassel at the top. And then we're going to string the excess string up through a bead to kind of help hide it and secure it and secure the tassel to the end of our bead string.
Now let's grab out one of our starfish from Dollar Tree. We're going to add that to the other end of this string of beads. And to do that, we're going to use some of the thinner Dollar Tree jute. You're going to take a length and kind of pull it to the top point of one of the starfish legs and then make a loop at the bottom and start wrapping that loop with more string and hot glue the end to the back so that way our uh, starfish now has some string on it that we can use to attach to our bead string. Let's add one more seashell onto the tassel here to dress that up with some hot glue. Towards the top of the tassel there, up with the beads, just add a bunch of hot glue to both sides and then press that down into the glue. It just adds just a little bit more of that nautical style. I love lights and anytime I can add lights to uh, my outdoor decor, I do because it just gives such a pretty ambiance at nighttime. So this is a string of lights I got from Dollar Tree at Christmas time, but you can find them other times of the year too. So just keep your eye out. We are going to take some of these seashells and dress up the string of lights. Obviously, we need to add some batteries to our lights first, though. You always want to do that first to make sure all of your LED lights are working. And luckily, our strand is good to go. Then we're going to pull out the string of lights, kind of pull it all so it's not all scrunched up. And then we're going to use this bag of seashells from Dollar Tree. I specifically picked this bag because we need seashells that are going to be the same size that are going to meet up together. This one was just for fun. It was still together. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of pop open the seashell together to see if there was anything on the inside of it that was a little treasure or I don't know, maybe something, it could have been something gross too. <laughs> I didn't think about that. But when I popped it open, there was just a little bit of sand left over. But we're going to keep those seashells together because we need to start pairing seashells together so that we can have equal size sets, one for each light. Then it was kind of trial and error of how to get these lights to the inside of our seashells. I'm using some hot glue to kind of glue the light on the inside and then went around the outside edge of the seashell to then sandwich the light in between two seashells, but it just didn't really grab on right. So what I had to do is kind of tuck the light on the inside of the seashell and put the string of the light hanging off to the side and then added more glue so it would stay in there better. And this is what it looks like once we have the lights turned on. It was fun to check it out. Now we're gonna continue this process adding the light to the inside of the shell and kind of hanging the string out the side of the shell and then gluing another shell on top and just repeating that whole process over and over again. I'm pretty sure there were 10 lights on here. So for 10 lights total. So you can leave these as is if you want, but I thought I needed a little bit more style and also use something to help cover up the strand of lights in between each shell. So it's really easy to do that with some four ply jute here, just glued it onto the first seashell and then twisted the jute around the string of lights to kind of help cover up the black cording. I think this strand of lights turned out so cute. The addition of the jute really helped to kind of add some more style to this too. You could use this on a tiered tray, on a mantle, entryway, on a shelf, somewhere where you need a little bit of light and a little bit of ambiance with that nautical vibe. If you made it to the end of this video, leave me your favorite heart emoji down in the comments below. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next one. Have a creative day.